Hello and welcome to another question. This time it's question two from Stats Paper 2022 on the normal distribution. So, okay, what have we got here? Well, um, a manufacturer uses a machine to make metal rods um, and it was normally distributed with a mean of eight and a standard deviation of X. So it looks like it's going to be one of those standardization questions, I'm afraid, given that the proportion of metal rods less than 7.902 in length is 2.5%. Draw a little diagram, that's often quite handy just lets you know which side you're dealing with whether it's less than and greater than it's like a handy little uh, memory aid so this is 0.025 yeah now we've got to show that x or standard deviation is 0.05 <coughs> okay you always need to standardize in these ones if you ever finding mean or standard deviation or both that's when you standardize now z equals x minus mu over sigma that's how you go from your normal distribution to what's called the standard normal with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one yeah and you're trying to find basically the equivalent area on here because everything's connected to this normal distribution just by a linear code by a translation and then a stretch that's all it is really every normal distribution is just a translation and a stretch away from the standard normal okay so let's actually work this out we've got um okay so We'll write down firstly this in probability as a probability statement. Probability L is less than 7.902 is equal to 0 0.025. And then we'll standardise. The probability that Z is less than 7.902, but then minus the mean, which is 8, and over the standard deviation, which we don't know. Oh, it's X. We're going to call it X. We'll call it X here. Well, that equals 0 0.025. And now you can use your calculator and inverse normal, because now you know, so let's go to inverse normal first on my calculator, but now you know that the area is 0 0.025, crucially, when the standard deviation is 1, and the mean is, hang on, I've got this the wrong way around, when the stand, yeah, no, that's the right way around, and the mean is 0. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm just going to look that up on my calculator, and I get w minus 1.96, yeah, now that undoes the probability statement and says 7.902 minus 8 over x equals minus 1.96. It tells me that on this diagram I'd be here for that area to be 0.025, yeah? And going back to this diagram, well, what I can now do is use this statement like uh, to undo my linear code because all normal distributions where your normal distribution is represented by the letter x here if you take away a mean and divide by the standard deviation you get the standard normal yeah it basically what it does taking away eight puts you back to zero and then dividing by sigma makes your stretch or squash whichever way you want to look at it the same kind of scale factor as the standard normal where it's one and minus one so it's just a little code which takes you from the special normal to your normal now we can just rearrange this to find x times that over there divide that by that so that's what i'm going to do and you'll find that if you do minus 1.96, oh, sorry, it should be the other way around. Uh, if you find if you do 7.902 minus 8 divided by minus 1.96, you should get the answer, which comes to uh, 0.05. We've already been told what it comes to. Yeah. Okay, so that's that one. Okay, calculate the proportion of metal rods that are between 7.94 and 8.09. Well, that's easy now because we just need to use our calculators for that. And we can just plug it in. And I suppose they tell you this answer here, so you can still get part B right, even if you can't get part A right. Plug that into your calculator. That's your lower bound. That's your upper bound. Normal CD, you get 0 0.8490. Yeah? And try that on a calc by all means. So 0.849. Okay, right, part C. Now, this, when I saw this question, it really surprised me because it's like, I, I'm sure I absolutely remember they took out expectation from the syllabus, and yet here it is. And this is why, you know, people ask, is it in the syllabus and stuff like that? And it's like, well, <laughs> I know they said it wasn't, <laughs> but it, there it is, like expected profit. This was, this was a really good question. And I mean, expectation should be in the syllabus, by the way, as well. Like, why they took it out is absolute bonkers. It was a perfect way of uh, extending the discrete random variables chapter. Uh, and it's a really useful topic, and it's great for teaching 
think something like gambling because like all gambling your expected profit is negative and so you can kind of quite easily explain you know whether a casino game is worth playing and the answer is invariably no uh, <laughs> you know like but it was good fun it was really good fun anyway uh, the, you know the challenge if you like if you when you're gambling is to ter turn the expected profit positive in your favor Anyway, let's talk about what this is. It's still not impossible to do if you've never met the idea before, but it's a lot easier if you have. OK, the cost of producing a single metal rod is 20p. A metal rod, where L is less than 7.94, is sold for scrap. OK, so you're not getting much money out of that. 7.94 to 8.09 is sold for 50p. If it's greater than 8.09, it costs 10 more p, and it's then sold for 50p. Calculate the expected profit per 500 of the metal rods. So we need to know all these values, the probability. Yeah, the probability that L is less than 7.94. Be handy to know that one. The probability that this is the case. Well, we already know this because we just did it in the above question. Remember, less than or equal to and less than with the normal distribution, exactly the same. Yeah. Um, and Bar means asked me in class for a philosophical explanation of why that's true. <laughs> okay, so that's 0 0.849. Yeah, and do we have we already worked out this on another part? No, that's a shame. Okay, so um, I'll work out this one. Yeah, the probability that L is greater than 8.09. Um, actually, I'll just do less than 7.94 and then take them both away from 1. Uh, so I'm just going to do that very quickly on my calculator because that's going to be really useful. So normal CD, lower is up minus 1,000, upper is 7.94. And then sigma is 0 0.05 and mu is, what was mu? 8. Okay, I'm getting 0 0.115 for that. And now I know this one by implication, because it's either this or this or this. So I can just do 1 minus those two answers for the other one. So 1 minus 0.849 minus 0.115. OK, this is going to be 0 0.036. OK, I need all those probabilities, because what I've got here is essentially a discrete random variable. Yeah, One of these three things could happen. But I can associate a score with it, which is really the way discrete random variables work, as in a profit or a loss. Yeah. Um, now, remember that the cost of producing them is 20p. Yeah. So there's a you know let's do a little table of probabilities. Um, this is like if you like x, and this is the probability that let's call it p for p crashes with probability. Let's call it x for profit. Oh, we've already used x. All right. What can we use for profit? Um, Let's call it pound sign for profit, yeah. And the probability that um, it equals pound sign, should we do it or pennies? Oh, I'm humming an R. Let's just keep it as x. And the probability that x equals x, yeah. Now what we've really got here is a discrete random variable, yeah. By which I mean there's a 11.5% chance, if you like, that you make a loss of 15p because each rod is 20p but you've sold it for scrap for 5p, so you've made a loss of 15p, and we'll work in pence here, yeah? Um, what's the probability of that? 0.115, yeah? Um, now, you could also make 30p, and that's an 84.9% chance, if you like, or you could also um, make, now, with that's 10p, off of 40p, so this is actually only going to be a 20p profit, isn't it? Because it's going to cost you 20p to make it, extra cost to shorten it, you sell it for 50p, so yeah, that's like that, yeah? Now, if you want to work out expected profit, well, look at it like this. Here's a simple way of looking at it. There's an 11% chance you lose 15p. There's an 85% chance, roughly, that you make 30p, and a 20 uh, and a 3.6% chance that you make 20p. Now, if you're making 500 metal rods, yeah, um, well, you're going to, you know, look at it like this, 11.5% of them, you're going to lose 15p on. So if we do 0 0.115 times 500 to find out how many we're uh, actually doing there, uh, let me do that, 500 times by 0 0.115, you can see that 57.5 roughly are going to be, you know, uh, too short yeah, and sold for scrap. Now, therefore, I'm going to take that and I'm going to times that by minus 15p, yeah? And that will work out the size of the loss on that amount. So times that by minus 15. Okay, I'm getting minus 862.5, yeah? 
in other words £8.62 I've lost on that now I can do the same on the rest of them exactly the same process so 0 0.849 times 500 yeah um, sorry about my terrible notation here and then I'm going I'm then just times that by 15 to get that is the you know profit loss essentially yeah gotta have a business head on doing this question okay so what does that come to 0.849 times 500 okay we're getting 44.5 don't worry about the 0.5s it's not a, not a problem at the moment times it by 30 Four two four point five times thirty. Yeah, one two seven three five. Okay, so we're getting about one hundred and twenty-seven pound out of those. That's good. That's that's tidy. And then zero point zero three six. We can see three point six percent of the rods are going to be not quite as profitable as the ones above, basically. So let's work that out. Zero point zero three six times five hundred. Eighteen, and I'm just going to do eighteen times twenty to work out you know how much I make on each of those and I get three pound sixty out of that or three hundred and sixty pence add it all together or take it away in the case of the negative and you'll have your profits and losses so one two seven three five plus three sixty minus eight six two point five um, okay and then I'm going to divide it by a hundred at the end to get the pounds okay I'll make it 122 pounds and 30 pence yeah and 32 or 33 pence yeah that's what we get now I've done it a slightly longer way than I normally would because you've never done expectation before but if you ever have to do expectation for a discrete random variable what expectation represents is the average yeah so if we just did that times that plus that times that plus that times that that would tell us on average how much we're making per rod yeah and it's a really useful idea in probability it really is so God knows why they took it out of syllabus and I was surprised to see it back in but it's good because like I say you can do it just through common sense reasoning as I've tried to show you here that's what I've tried to do sort of common sense reasoning okay uh, the same manufacturer makes metal hinges in large batches the hinges each have a probability of 0.015 of having a fault okay a random sample of 200 hinges is taken from the batch and if the batch is accepted if fewer than six hinges are faulty the manufacturers aim for 95 percent of batches to be accepted explain whether the manufacturer is likely to achieve the same okay i can tell you straight away this sounds difficult yeah now what have we got here i think we've got a binomial model because we've got 200 hinges yeah and there's a 0.015 probability of having a fault yeah and we're interested in how many of the 200 have a fault, yeah? Now, a random sample of 200 is taken from each batch, and the batch is accepted if fewer than six hinges are faulty. So we need fewer than six. Remember, fewer than six is five. So we're looking for the probability that x is less than or equal to five. Yeah, it might be easier to look at it like that, yeah? Now, we want to work this out, obviously, for this question. So I'm going to work that out. Um, so there's a little bit of binomial distribution. I do like a little bit of binomial. It's important. Now, this is an example of binomial CD. CD it stands for like a cumulative distribution, but it's essentially a one where it's an inequality sign. I always say PD is equals, CD is less than or equals. Stick by those rules and you're good on my calculator anyway. Um, okay, I'm going to go to, I think it's variable you go to. Yeah, it's variable. Um, go X is 5, N is 200. We're not supposed to use an approximation here, are we? No, good. Uh, P is 0.015. Okay, 0.917. I'm getting there. 0.9176. Yeah. Now, um, okay, <laughs> that's that's interesting, isn't it? Like uh, that is not 95%. As this is less than 95%. the manufacturer is unlikely to achieve their aim now that's a good example of where they like to stretch you by introducing binomial distribution at the end of a normal distribution question or vice versa yeah they like doing that um, it's just 
the way they are yeah it's to keep you on your toes um, I thought the expected profit bit was the hardest bit of that question though that's not an easy bit but yeah it's not too bad either I hope you can see if you maintain calm you can do it and also as I always point out in the normal distribution questions yes it's hard but look those first three marks aren't bad they're fairly routine in this five marker I hope you can see that it's worth working out some of those probabilities so you might get two or three out of that even if you don't get it all right and on the last four marks hopefully you recognize it's a binomial you might not get anything here if you don't recognize it's binomial but if you do you're probably going to get all four um, so there we go it's not impossible okay hope that was useful keep up the hard work bye bye